Live from Television Park, this is Fort Wayne's NBC News at 11. Ranches everywhere. Uh, you can see up there, all those stacks of timber I picked up this morning. Just looked like a train wreck. Mother Nature is not always kind. She opened the basement door. It was right up there, and it was still bubbling. It was still coming up but it was too late. It, it had already spilled in. Right now at 11, we are focused on the aftermath of last night's storms. Many residents are cleaning up their property once again, not even a month after a derecho left so much damage in the fort and in northeast Indiana. And tonight, we have full coverage of how this latest storm is affecting people in our area. Plus, we've got good news when it comes to power outages. According to Indiana Michigan Power's outage map, you see it there, Fewer than 1,700 people tonight remain without power. INM saying crews restored about 90% of power to those who lost service, and they hope everyone has power by this time tomorrow night. Over to a live look outside on this Wednesday night, thanks to one of our many Fort Wayne's NBC Skyview cameras. A big difference from last night when we experienced all of that wild weather. I'm happy to say that conditions are calmer. <laughs> Good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Julian Tikaram. And I'm Linda Jackson. We begin our storm coverage with Chief Meteorologist Chris Daniels and he's taking a look at our first alert forecast. And Chris, I'm not sure, did it rain much more tonight? It's boring. Oh, I mean, we love boring. Boring, boring is, is good. Yes. After, after last yeah. night, uh, yeah. there, there were a few light showers, but they didn't amount to much. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about that rainfall that we had. These are totals from yesterday, from the morning deluge and from the evening heavy rain. You put them together and they're record breakers. The north side of Fort Wayne up toward Huntertown, 9.18 inches. That is an incredible amount of rain in about 24 hours, maybe a little more than that. Wallen got over eight inches of rain. Columbia City, 5.72, Albion at 5.6 and 3.6 inches of rain fell in Garrett. Where is it raining now? Nowhere. That's all ground clutter. We've got more details on your outlook here in your first alert forecast in just minutes. Chris, thank you. Residents in the fort are dealing with the aftermath of that storm and boy did it leave a mess. Look at this. One of the areas in the Summit City hit hard last night. West Wayne Street between Rock Hill and Union where two trees fell into the street and onto cars. Now that location is part of the route for this Saturday's Three Rivers Parade. Yeah, Fort Wayne City Councilwoman Michelle Chambers took a look at some of the damage and said she's so happy it wasn't any worse. Well, I'm out on my lunch break and I happen to have a, a unit, apartment building that we own in West Central and I look and I see this huge tree down. I'm like, oh my God. Um, one, safety first for our res residents and then secondly, it's in the parade uh, pathway. So right here is where the parade starts. So we want to make sure, I just put a call in to 311, our legislative assistant, to make sure that we can get this tree removed. Chambers says she will continue to be there for people who need to clean up their property. She's hopeful the entire parade route will be cleared before the weekend. Cleanup is expected to take days, though, especially because people are still dealing with the aftermath from last month's deadly derecho. And more eye-catching video from the storm's damage. This is drone footage sent in from a viewer of downtown Hoagland. That's the premier glass building on English Street that you'll see in this video. After last night's high winds, you see it right there, it is now missing the majority of its large roof. It had debris scattered all around the building. Officials there say, thankfully, no one was hurt. Along with the devastating storm damage, there's significant flooding across northeast Indiana, leaving some homes underwater. Fort Wayne's NBC's Carly Van Cleve reports tonight on a Huntertown mother and her daughter with special needs, just waiting to find out if anything in their home can be saved. It's flood water like this that's leaving families like Kamala Haas and her daughter without a home right now. In fact, this water filled her neighborhood just last night. And now the two of them are in the hospital because her daughter has a disability and that's the only place she can get care. It began as a usual night for Kamala Haas and her daughter. I was doing laundry, watching TV. Uh, I had just put Lauren down for the night. But that quickly changed after the storm. What happened? Well, the rain yesterday, it just, it kind of flooded this four houses out. She says the rain just wouldn't stop. Before I knew it, this was flooded. 
and suddenly she heard a noise. Like, I thought it was the washing machine because I kept hearing the water, but no, it was the waterfall coming in my basement. She looked in her basement and... It was all the way up to here and it was still bubbling up. How did you feel when you saw it all? I won't lie, I just started crying and I didn't know what to do. I had to hit panic mode. She says she knew they had to leave because her 16-year-old daughter, Lauren, has a disability. She needs constant care. She has a gene deletion, chromosome addition. Haas grabbed as much of her medical supplies as she could, but when she walked outside... So was this all water? This was all water up to here. Oh my goodness. As far as she could see, water flooding her neighborhood. Is this all flooded too? Yep, it was all the way back. Haas says they called the police and the fire department helped them get out of their house safely. They stayed at the fire station until they were able to get dry clothes. What kind of care does your daughter need that you, you know, can't give her right now in this home? Well, she has the special bed. She has to be up in bed. She has, she has a trach. So she has to be on a vent. They had nowhere to go. So her next problem, where will Lauren get the care she needs? Going to a hotel room, it just wouldn't work because there's not enough outlets. The hospital, and that's where they'll remain until her home inspection is complete. What is keeping you going? Family and the community. What I thought that, you know, I just live here and people think I'm the crazy lady that doesn't ever come out of the house. And, but it wasn't true. I mean, everybody was down here, people I didn't even know. And Haas tells me they've been in contact with the Red Cross, just looking for somewhere to stay. But right now, she thinks the hospital is the best place because that's where her daughter can get the medical care she needs. For now, reporting, I'm Carly Van Cleve. All right, Carly, thank you so much. And Haas says she's grateful for the Huntertown Fire Department and the American Red Cross for helping them through this recovery. And flooding, also an issue for the Fort Wayne Pitbull Coalition on Parnell Avenue. Today, the staff worked hard to clean up. That process included ripping out the carpet. Tonight, the group still needs help and put out a call on social media asking for donations. I always knew it was a possibility. We're a low-lying, um, tri-level building, and um, I always thought, you know, someday, someday it's going to happen, and unfortunately, it was July 5th. That one's going in the books for me. <laughs> She says before today, they have not had to deal with this kind of flooding. And to deal with the flooding, the city provided sandbagging materials at Johnny Appleseed Park. Residents that needed help went down to the park with their own shovel to collect sand. Right now, city leaders say they are not concerned with river levels, but they will continue to monitor those water levels. We continue our coverage now. City Utilities once again waiving fees at the Biosolids facility on Lake Avenue to help you get rid of your tree limbs and branches. Hours for the site, 8 to 6, Monday through Saturday, and noon to 6 on Sunday. If your property was hit hard by the storms, you can fill out an online form at app.neighborlink.org and can upload pictures that provide added context. After that, Neighborlink Fort Wayne will send volunteers to help with anything from tree removal to basement draining. New tonight, the storm impacting one event for the Three Rivers Festival. Because of the high water levels on the river, the festival's board of directors canceled its river excursions. Organizers say the increased speed and height of the rivers have left the rivers unsafe to host this event. They go on to say that they have the public safety at the top of their minds. Just a reminder, the 53rd Annual Fest kicks off Friday at 11. And remember to stay with Fort Wayne's NBC News for the very latest weather updates. We'll continue to have the latest on the aftermath of Tuesday's storm with our team of meteorologists and reporters. Well, this news just coming into our newsroom tonight. A girl is under arrest in the fort charged with attempted murder in the shooting of another girl. We don't have ages in this story right now from police, but they do tell us they took the suspect into custody in connection with the shooting on Piccadilly Circle that happened around 11 this morning. Officers say they arrived at the location and found a girl in the backyard who'd been shot in critical condition. Police say they arrested the suspect at a different location and we'll keep you updated on any further details that we learn about the case. New details tonight in the deadly 4th of July parade shooting in Illinois. Police revealing the suspect confessed in detail to the shooting 
where seven people were killed and talked about a potential second attack. Robert Cremo III faces seven counts of first-degree murder, the victims ranging in age from the 30s to the 80s. He'll likely face more counts from the dozens of people injured in Highland Park. According to authorities, after leaving the parade, the suspect ended up in Madison, Wisconsin, and briefly thought about unleashing an attack on the 4th of July event there as well. Cremo is being held without bond. And tonight, a GoFundMe campaign for the toddler orphaned in that shooting has raised more than $2 million in just 24 hours. Tens of thousands of people have made contributions to support two-year-old Aiden McCarthy, who lost both of his parents. Aiden was found pinned underneath the body of his father. The verified GoFundMe campaign was started Tuesday by a family relative. The effort is designed to support Aiden and his caregivers until he becomes an adult. New at 11, a report assessing law enforcement's response during the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. It was released today. Inside this report, something so difficult to learn. It indicates that an officer asked permission to shoot the gunman before the gunman entered the school. It's not clear whether the officer's supervisor heard the request or perhaps responded too late. It also outlines another missed opportunity when a Uvalde school officer could have caught the suspect outside. During an interview with CNN, Uvalde's mayor said he fears there's a cover-up of this investigation by the DPS director. Are you concerned that the truth is not going to come out? I think we will get to the truth. I think they've, they've put themselves back themselves in a corner and they don't have a way out yet. And they're just trying to figure out how do you, because they've released so much BS, in my opinion, that they put themselves in a corner. So how do you come out of the corner? Another problem identified by the report points out the fact that no effective incident command was ever established. In North Carolina, protesters marched to an assisted living facility this afternoon demanding the arrest of Carolyn Bryant Donham in connection with the murder of Emmett Till in Mississippi more than 60 years ago. Protesters think Donham lives there. She's the Mississippi woman who in 1955 accused Emmett Till of whistling at her just days after that accusation, Till was abducted, tortured, shot, and killed. The demonstrators want an arrest warrant recently found in a courthouse in Mississippi to be served on Donham. Also at 11 in Muncie, a family has to start over following a holiday weekend tragedy. Tyler and April Olson and their children lived in a home on North Janney Avenue for more than a decade. Well, the house caught fire Saturday, claiming most everything they owned. The family got out okay, and now relatives, including some family members in the fort, are coordinating donations of clothing and other essentials. So if you'd like to help, we've put information on the needs involved and the address where a collection is taking place on our website. That address is fortwaynesnbc.com. Taking you to the nation's capital, this is a live look at Washington tonight. A key member of the Trump administration has reached a deal to sit for the January 6th committee. According to two sources, former White House counsel Pat Cipollone has agreed to appear under subpoena for a transcribed interview. It's scheduled to take place behind closed doors on Friday. Numerous officials say Cipollone helped prevent then-President Donald Trump from taking actions considered legally questionable around the time of the 2020 presidential election. President Biden was in Cleveland this afternoon where he announced the final piece in implementing the American Rescue Plan Special Financial Assistance Program. With inflation at a 40-year high, the president is anchoring his message towards blue-collar voters. The rescue plan is expected to address troubled pension funding and help roughly 2 million workers and retirees avoid benefit cuts. More relief coming to families. The Biden administration announced a 14th Operation Fly Formula mission to help ease the nation's baby formula shortage. It will bring 318,000 pounds of infant formula from Australia. That's about 4.7 million eight ounce bottles. Those deliveries will take place July 10th and July 21st. New tonight in the coronavirus crisis, the FDA revised its emergency use authorization for Paxlovid to allow pharmacists to prescribe it because the drug must be taken within five days of the onset, onset rather of symptoms. The FDA hopes the move allows more people to get treated quickly. 
Officials say they still recommend that most people who test positive see their doctor or visit a test to treat site. Updates tonight on the monkeypox outbreak. U.S. health officials have distributed roughly 41,500 courses of that monkeypox vaccine. A course of the vaccine involves two doses, four weeks apart. The Biden administration's strategy of distribution focuses on areas with the highest case rates and overall risk. Washington, D.C. has had the most cases per capita and has gotten the most doses per capita. California, Illinois, and New York have also gotten a lot of vaccine, especially in New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Still to come on Fort Wayne's NBC News at 11. We'll get with Chris to find out if any more rain is in the forecast. Don't miss that updated first alert forecast. You're watching Fort Wayne's NBC News at 11 with Linda Jackson, Julian T. Crump, Chief Meteorologist Chris Daniels, and Sports with Chris Ryan. Fort Wayne's NBC News at 11, focused on the Ford. It takes all types to play Family Feud, the adventurous one. Name a way a woman is like a roller coaster ride. She makes you scream. Uh -huh. The clueless one. If all the U.S. presidents were alive, who would you date? Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> The discreet one. I brought you some snacks. <laughs> See who shows up this season on Family Feud. Family Feud, weeknights at 7 on Fort Wayne's NBC. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. It takes all types to play Family Feud, the brave one. A man loses his appeal when he loses what? Hair. Hair. <laughs> the bashful one. Give me something you'd hate to be caught on camera doing in an elevator. Oh, I hate to be caught changing. <laughs> Appreciate the family support and everything. The 12 year game show host predicts that it won't be up there. <laughs> Cena shows up this season on Family Feud on Fort Wayne's NBC. Next trail. Neil Patrick Harris pops in for Pop Grab! Grab that money! Plus, Carla Hall talks turkey made easy. And Drew's news never stops. One nightclub will use body heat from dancers to power the venue. The only time I want a stranger's body heat is in an avalanche. Next, Drew. The Drew Barrymore Show, weekdays at 2 on Fort Wayne's NBC. Last night, we were talking about huge amounts of rain. In fact, over nine inches in parts of uh, northern Allen County. Tonight, we're talking about nothing. Well, we're not talking about nothing. We're talking about weather that's pretty calm, pretty quiet out there, and still pretty muggy as we take a look at the conditions in Fort Wayne International Airport. At this hour, 71 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. We did not see much rain today, although we didn't see much sunshine either. But uh, maybe a little more sun tomorrow and the day after, and a lot more sun over the weekend. The heat down towards the south, it'll stay there. We notice it's a little bit cooler in the northern plains and the northern Great Lakes. Chicago 73, 77 at Minneapolis, and 71 at Rapid City. It's still steamy and hot down into the south. And this heat's going to be squashed back a little bit over the next week or so. And I don't think we'll see any 90-degree readings for maybe a week or so. That'll be a nice break for us. Max Doppler radar showing all the action toward the uh, Mid-South and the Southeast Coast where there's some severe thunderstorm warnings in North Carolina. Some storms South Carolina all the way down to Jacksonville, Florida. But an absence of precipitation. We'd seen a little bit of light rain develop coming in off the lake earlier today and it's just fizzled out. So it's mostly dry tonight. And what's interesting is uh, the, the models have flipped. Uh, what we're talking about rain earlier uh, again tomorrow and Friday. Now they're suggesting, hold on, we may not see that much rain after all. Now, we couldn't rule out a shower storm tomorrow afternoon, uh, but the modeling is indicating it's going to be pretty quiet 
Uh, there are some showers forming tomorrow evening back toward Illinois. These will move toward us, but now they're saying they may fizzle into just some very light showers on Friday afternoon. So I think as far as rain totals between now and the weekend, they should be very, very low. Let's detail it for you tonight. 68 degrees, mostly cloudy. A few showers, uh, especially south and east of Allen County, but I think most areas will stay dry tonight. And there could even be a little patchy fog developing. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 tomorrow. It's Thursday. We're closer to the weekend. 84 degrees, slight chance of a shower or storm, and uh, easterly wind at 5. As we clear out late Friday into Saturday, the weekend looking stellar with highs in the low 80s with lower humidity. And overnight lows dropping back to the 50s. Looks like uh, about the temperature for the parade to start at 10 a.m. on Saturday should be in the low to mid 70s. Oh my so gosh. So looking forward to yeah, that. You're yeah, welcome. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Please come to the parade. <laughs> that was a little sassy. That was. <laughs> this is the first time I've really seen Chris Daniels take credit for good weather. He usually yeah. usually he says, no, I don't want to. Yeah, right. It's a little pretentious. I yeah. must admit. Little, just a little pretentious. Yeah, I'm, not that, I'm not that guy. <laughs> my dogs thanked you. We they got did. to go for a walk tonight for the first time. Your yard's got to be muddy though, right? Oh, so muddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. All right, coming up next, there's a lot of jobs out there, but unfortunately not enough people. We'll give you a picture of the job market in our area post-pandemic after the break. Summer's here, y'all. Spend it with the Kelly Clarkson Show. Oh, hello. The star. The fun. Yeah. That girl is poison. And me. I'll be there too. <laughs> it's summer on Kelly. Yes, Kelly, and cheers to you. <laughs> Weekdays at 3 on Fort Wayne's NBC. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Summer's here, y'all. I'm thankful for the games and the ability to beat my opponents. Not today, Kelly. Okay, let's see who can sing this right. This is my kid's favorite song. What's up? What's up? What fun it is to ride and sing a slave song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. Remix. Plus, on a gas tired Rachel dress. <laughs> Next to Kelly. <laughs> Thursday at 3 on Fort Wayne's NBC. I'm Ken Fries, director of Crime Stoppers. You know Crime Stoppers pays rewards for cases that are solved by tips and felony arrests. You may not know that the money for tips comes from donations and from fundraisers, not tax dollars. Crime Stoppers has an upcoming fundraiser on July 30th. It's our seventh annual car show, Rock the Fort. If you love classic cars, muscle cars, Jeeps, and trucks, this event is for you. Remember, you can help stop crime, earn a cash reward, and stay anonymous with a tip to Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. You tell. We won't. Welcome back. We remain focused on the fort. Well, if you're looking for a job, you could have found one today because more than 80 employers set up booths at Purdue Fort Wayne, hoping to fill 2,300 open job positions. Organizers say they host this job fair every year, but it's taken on new urgency in a post-pandemic job market. Indiana's labor force participation rate is 64 percent. That's above the national average, but it's still not enough to meet demand. Uh, now, we need more people, you know, we have, we have a people deficiency, um, so any ways we can help support getting people into the labor market, uh, however that may be, we're actively in support of. We can educate them, we can give them opportunities for employment, and when we do so, they will stay here, not only get their first job, but be here for their entire careers. The job fair is sponsored by Congressman Jim Banks. Coming up in sports, Fort Wayne FC fights to keep their playoff hopes alive. That's next. 
Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos. But tonight, he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago, in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Julian T. Carum on Fort Wayne's NBC. Focused on the Ford. Next trail. Neil Patrick Harris pops in for Pop Quiz! Grab that money! Plus, Carla Hall talks turkey made easy. And Drew's news never stops. One nightclub will use body heat from dancers to power the venue. The only time I want a stranger's body heat is in an avalanche. Next Drew. The Drew Barrymore Show, weekdays at 2 on Fort Wayne's NBC. It takes all types to play Family Feud, the brave one. A man loses his appeal when he loses what? Hair. Hair. <laughs> the bashful one. Give me something you'd hate to be caught on camera doing in an elevator. Oh, I hate to be caught changing. <laughs> Appreciate the family support and everything. The 12 year game show host predicts that it won't be up there. <laughs> See who shows up this season on Family Feud on Fort Wayne's NBC. Summer's here, y'all. Spend it with the Kelly Clarkson show. Oh, hello. The stars. Hello. The fun. That girl is poison. And me. I'll be there too. <laughs> <laughs> Weekdays at 3 on Fort Wayne's NBC. Fort Wayne FC needing a win for potential playoff positioning as the boys in blue hosting Toledo at Shields Field. This game, the first of three FC could use to secure a spot in postseason play as one of the top teams in USL League 2. Beto Anaya up to Forster Ajago, the header, one zip FC, and they are just getting started. Moments later, it's another crispy pass up to Max Amoka, and he adds another 2 0 still in the first half when the teamwork continues. Riley Lynch, this time the beneficiary. And Fort Wayne finishes the job 3-0 over Toledo, their road finale this Sunday at 5 against Dayton. He's the name you hear on a near nightly basis. Your Fort Wayne Tin Caps, Robert Hassel III, will now have the opportunity to show the country what he's got in this year's All-Star Futures game. The 20-year-old named one of the first four to the National League squad that includes not only high A-ball players, but the very best minor leaguers across all levels. Hassel will man the outfield at Dodgers Stadium on July 16th. Part of who I am is just is never being satisfied um, about really anything, you know, always being thankful, you know, just grinding every day and never like sitting back and being satisfied about, you know, how I'm playing. If it's a good week or whatever, you know, we're ready the next week. Yeah, it's super exciting. But like I said, you know, this is just going to unlock more, even higher goals for myself in the future. So it's definitely a great thing. Hassel's tin caps expected to take the field earlier today for a noon tilt, but the weather postponed action. The game will be made up on Saturday night as part of a doubleheader beginning at 535. The Caps next play at Parkview Field tomorrow night at 705 against the Lake County Captains. And the Pacers retain a young piece in power forward Jalen Smith on a new two-year deal. The 22-year-old former 10th overall pick in the 2020 NBA draft found his footing in 22 games with Indiana last season, traded from the Phoenix Suns for Torrey Craig. Smith made a strong impact upon arrival, averaging 13 points and eight rebounds in just 25 minutes per game. You know, when we did the trade uh, not too long ago, we were super excited and uh, we just didn't know how good this guy was and sky's the limit. So his mom, Lisa, his dad, Charles, they said it was great to see him smile again. And so uh, Indiana, you know, became a very, a very warm place for him and his family. It's just amazing to be like to be welcomed 
after being traded and pretty much everybody just giving me that that confidence boost to just go out and play my game and have fun and feeling like I'm part of a family here is it makes that feeling even more amazing. So pretty cool for a player with high hopes out of Maryland, but can never really find a role with the Suns. Now a proclaimed starter for the Pacers and another young piece in that Indiana core. That was, that was right. so from the heart. I yeah, know. very much so. I love and that. I love the fact that he acknowledged fans on Twitter and, you know, he said that made me want to stay. I wanted to be part of a family. So yeah. that was really cool. For everything Pacers Insight, please join Julian <laughs> oh, Tutsman. Oh, well, he said he had multiple offers with the Indiana Right, for more home. money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jalen. Yeah. Great job. Awesome. We'll be, we'll be right back. <laughs> FordWaynesNBC.com. Focused on the Ford. I'm Ken Fries, director of Crime Stoppers. You know Crime Stoppers pays rewards for cases that are solved by tips and felony arrests. You may not know that the money for tips comes from donations and from fundraisers, not tax dollars. Crime Stoppers has an upcoming fundraiser on July 30th. It's our seventh annual car show, Rock the Fork. If you love classic cars, muscle cars, Jeeps, and trucks, this event is for you. Remember, you can help stop crime, earn a cash reward, and stay anonymous with a tip to Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. You tell. We won't. Summer's here, y'all. I'm thankful for the games and the ability to beat my opponents. Not today, Kelly. Okay, let's see who can sing this right. This is my kid's favorite song. What's up? What's up? What fun it is to ride and sing a slave song tonight. Oh, it jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. Remix. Plus, on a gas tired Rachel Dredge. <laughs> Next, Kelly. <laughs> Thursday at 3 on Fort Wayne's NBC. It takes all types to play Family Feud, the brave one. A man loses his appeal when he loses what? Hair. Hair. <laughs> the bashful one. Give me something you'd hate to be caught on camera doing in an elevator. Oh, I hate to be caught changing. Good answer. Good answer. Appreciate the family support and everything. The 12-year game show host predicts that it won't be up there. <laughs> See who shows up this season on Family Feud. On Fort Wayne's NBC. First alert weather. It's our promise to let you know first of any significant changes in our weather. That's weather that could change your plan. To severe weather that can change your life. We're tracking, giving you advance notice of your weather days ahead. The moment that sunny turns serious, we'll issue a first alert. Well in advance of impending weather. We're not here to alarm you, but we are here to alert you with what we know when we know it. First alert weather. It's our commitment to you. Well, there it is, your weather for tomorrow. Your first alert day planner has a chance of rain tomorrow afternoon, but the chance of rain is small, and I'm not expecting big storms tomorrow, and it might be dry the entire day. All mm. right, after Tuesday, we Ooh. just need calm weather for just, a long just time. Just for a few weeks, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, at least, yes. <laughs> Good night. Have you heard that hepatitis C threatens the lives of thousands of Hoosiers who don't even know they have it? Well, listen up. You can protect yourself with three easy steps. Just check, care, cure. These three C's are saving lives. And if you discover you have this deadly virus, you're just one step away from care. Getting the right care is easy and gives you a winning strategy over hep C, putting you back in the game. Get the ball rolling at checkcarecure.in.gov. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Next trail. Neil Patrick Harris pops in for Pop Quiz! Crack that money! Plus, Carla Hall talks turkey made easy. And Drew's news never stops. One nightclub will use body heat from dancers to power the venue. The only time I want a stranger's body heat is in an avalanche. Next Drew. The Drew Barrymore Show, weekdays at 2 on Fort Wayne's NBC.
Since the start of the year, a staggering 34 million Americans quit their jobs. Attention, shoppers, I quit. I quit. How do you feel about the way you quit? It's a respectable thing when someone stands up for themselves. From rage quitting, that video will haunt you in your career, to rich quitting. I went from making 31000 to a million dollar net worth by my 40th birthday. The cause and effect of the great resignation. Next, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, Thursday at 4 on Fort Wayne's NBC. Breaking news when it happens. Fort Wayne's NBC. Tonight, the confession and the alleged plans for a second attack. Top story, live from Highland Park, Illinois. The 21-year-old suspect appearing before a judge today. Authorities say he confessed in detail to the shooting at a July 4th parade and even considered a second attack in another American city. Tragic details emerging about the victims, including the two-year-old boy now without both of his parents. A GoFundMe set up to help him, exploding with donations, more than $2 million pledged and counting. And the mounting questions tonight about how the alleged shooter was able to legally obtain five weapons Weapons, despite a history full of red flags, including a visit from police because he was threatening to kill people. What his family's lawyer told me. Plus, the chilling new details in another mass shooting. A new report finding a Uvalde police officer missed multiple chances to stop the gunman before he entered the school. The officer thought he needed permission to fire, but investigators say that was not the case. Dangerous storm strike, the dash cam capturing the moment a car was struck by lightning on a Florida highway, a possible tornado already touching down in Ohio. Damage and widespread power outages reported. Nearly 30 million people now in the storm zone. Spy warning, the FBI and its British counterpart accusing China of using a large-scale global hacking network to steal Western technology. The concern about TikTok and how China could be getting access right from your phone. Race against time, the man locked inside a burning car due to an electrical issue with the vehicle. How three officers finally pulled that driver to safety. And the scare on stage, Carlos Santana collapsing mid-set. An update tonight on the rock legend's condition. Top story starts right now. And good evening. We are live again tonight from Highland Park, Illinois, on a street that was once a parade route. And now, as you can see, the scene of a mass shooting. They have taken away some of the folding chairs and the strollers that were left behind. But residents here are still coming here, and they're, they're leaving with tears in their eyes two days later. This community still grappling with all that loss. 